Hello again, everybody. This is Steve Callis speaking of sports at WestchesterCountyPost.com. Today we're here to talk about whether Eli Manning, the New York Giants quarterback, is or is not a Hall of Famer. As you know, this is a hotly debated subject in New York and even around the league to some degree. Uh, Eli, of course, had those two shining moments, two incredible Super Bowl victories that we'll go into a little bit here. Uh, but he's also had a lot of non-success, barely making the playoffs in other years. His record after his win over Miami last week is a not impressive 117 and 117. He's a 500 quarterback. Thankfully, he won that game, so he's not under 500. Um, but despite all that, I'm going to read you some stats. I'm going to talk about the two Super Bowls. Uh, and then I'll give you my conclusion, and more importantly, Kurt Warner's conclusion. Uh, Kurt Warner, as you know, is the guy who was replaced by Eli Manning back in Eli Manning's rookie season. I'm going to be reading you some stats also, uh, including some stats in the two Super Bowls, uh, but I think I'll just start here. Eli Manning didn't just win two Super Bowls. He didn't just win two Super Bowl MVPs. Uh, Every quarterback who has won two Super Bowls except for Jim Plunkett is in the Hall of Fame. So I think that's a good starting point for Eli Manning. He's won two Super Bowls and he's won two Super Bowl MVPs. But we're going to go back to his first Super Bowl, which many of you will remember in 2008 at the end of the 2007 season. Um, the Patriots were 16-0 and in the regular season. They were 18-0 uh, after their first two playoff wins. Um, they were about to be crowned the greatest team in the history of the world. They were a solid 12-point favorite in the Super Bowl, which didn't make a lot of sense to me because many of you Giant fans know in the final game of the regular season, uh, the Giants played very hard, very tough. They lost at the Meadowlands to the Patriots 38-35, to but it was a very close game, a very tough game, a very hard-played game. This was not guys not playing because they had nothing to play for. These were guys who were playing to get a beat on what the Patriots were doing. Uh, that made the Patriots 16-0. and Then they won their first two playoff games. So what happened in that Super Bowl? Well, you guys know the greatest play, in my opinion, or maybe the second greatest play in the history of the Super Bowl and arguably in the history of football, and that is what's known as the helmet catch. Late in the game, Tom Brady drove the Patriots down the field, so they went ahead. Uh, the Giants were behind. They got the ball back with uh, two minutes and 39 seconds left in the game. Eli had to drive them down the field. Uh, I'm just going to look at my notes and give you a couple of thoughts on a couple of plays, including the helmet play. So you recall what the helmet play actually was. And don't forget, there were two miracles on that play. The first is Eli Manning. Some people argued he was in the grasp, but how he escaped being sacked on that play is still, you can watch the play 50 times, and it's hard to believe he wasn't sacked. And he wasn't sacked. There was no rule in the grasp. He eventually broke free. Again, they got the ball back with 239 left, and Eli led them on an 83-yard drive. This third down play uh, to David Tyree, where Tyree made the incredible helmet catch, they call it. He had one hand on the ball, and the ball was on his helmet. Rodney Harrison, a great DB, was all over him, couldn't knock the ball loose. That was a key first down, and that play went for 32 yards and a first down. Then after that, later on, uh, another third down conversion on third and 11. And then a lot of you remember Plaxico Burris wide open on the left side of the end zone uh, to score what proved to be the winning touchdown with 35 seconds left, 13-yard touchdown pass from Eli Manning to Plaxico Burris. And... For, uh, Super Bowl 42, Giants 17, Patriots 14. I just want to give you Eli's numbers. I understand they weren't great, but they were good. 19 for 34 for 255 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. A lot of people will hear those numbers and say, they're okay, they were good, but not great. Um, but you have to understand what they did. They beat an undefeated team. No team had ever gone 16-0 and when the Dolphins did it. I think it was 14 games in a season. Um, and to beat an 18-0 Patriots team, again, even today considered by many to be the greatest team ever, is one of the biggest upsets in the history of the Super Bowl. So Eli Manning, Tom Brady had led them down to get the lead, as he often does. Eli Manning then, late in the game, led the Giants back down the field 
and I believe this is one key factor. Don't just tell me he won two Super Bowls. Don't just tell me he won two Super Bowl MVPs. Look what he did against an 18-0 and team with the game on the line, driving them 83 yards down the field. So that's the first Super Bowl. That's Super Bowl 42. I want to talk a little now about Super Bowl 46, 2012 in Indianapolis. I was actually at that Super Bowl sitting in the next to last row because the tickets were so incredibly high. Uh, but my son, the Patriots fan, poor parenting on my part, I understand, but those video games got in the way. Um, my son was a Patriots fan. Of course, I'm a lifelong Giants fan. And in that Super Bowl on February 5th, 2012, you probably know the Giants were 9-7. and seven. They had the worst record of any team to win a Super Bowl, just one game over 500. Patriots that year were 13-3. and three. The Giants would win the game 21-17. to 17. But again, what happened? The Giants were down 17-15 late in the game. Eli gets them started from their own 12-yard line. Again, one of the greatest plays in Super Bowl history. You guys will recall Mario Manningham down the sideline, 344 left in the game, a 38-yard bomb. I still don't know how he caught it and stayed in bounds, but Eli Manning threw the perfect pass. Again, this is against the Patriots. Eventually left to that six-yard game-winning touchdown to Ahmad Rashad. And you may also remember he didn't know whether to fall down at the one-yard line or to go into the end zone. He went into the end zone with 57 seconds left in the game. And being a Giant fan at the game, I thought he scored too early. And Tom Brady, you know, he couldn't get the job done. Uh, but down four, he had to score a touchdown, and they could not score a touchdown. Giants 21, Patriots 17. Now here's Eli, his second MVP, his second time beating the evil empire, as some people call them, the dreaded, hated Patriots. Um, but here are his numbers in that game. 30 for 40. 296 yards, one touchdown, a game-winning touchdown, and no interceptions. Those are big-time numbers in a big-time game against a big-time team with a big-time coach. So the fact that he not only won two Super Bowls and two Super Bowl MVPs, but also led game-winning drives of 83 and 88 yards in the final minutes of the Super Bowl against the Patriots, very few quarterbacks in the history of the game have two games like that. So when you start coming back at me, he hardly ever made the playoffs. He's a 500 quarterback. This, to me, overrides virtually anything you can say about the mediocrity of Eli Manning in other years, which I totally agree with. But again, every quarterback that has two or more Super Bowls except Jim Plunkett, who's eligible for the Hall of Fame, is in the Hall of Fame. You can make a case for Plunkett. That's maybe for another time. But to me, just those two games, Super Bowls, uh, is enough, in my view, to make Eli Manning a Hall of Fame quarterback. A couple of other things. You know about his ability to play every week. This is a big deal in today's game and has been for decades. He goes out there and plays every game. He never missed a start. We'll get into when he did miss a start. He never missed a start because of injury. So this guy was an Iron Man in a league where there are very few Iron Men. And to play quarterback in this league and never miss a game because of injury he had 12 years in a row of starting 16 games. That's, as you know, a full season. Um, and then in 2017, he only started 15 games. That's because McAdoo lost his mind and benched him for one game. And boy, was, did he get negative publicity for that. And then the year after, he started 16 ag games again. So in 14 years, he missed one game, and that was only because he was benched. As you know, this year, he was 0-2 the first uh, two games of the year. They benched him for Daniel Jones. Jones got hurt. He came back with this big win against Miami last week. Um, but staggering numbers for a quarterback who was very upset that his consecutive game streak was stopped. But once again, it wasn't because of injury. So there's the two Super Bowls, the two Super Bowl MVPs, the two beating the Patriots, the two last minute drives to win the Super Bowl. And there's this incredible Iron Man that he was all through his career. And again, it was taken away from him because he was benched. You can argue he should have been benched, and that's certainly a debate. But I don't think it takes away from his ability as a quarterback and as an Iron Man. There's one more stat I want to bring up. You know, over a 60% completion rate for his career. 
that's pretty good. It's not great nowadays. Uh, and you know, he's been around for so long. Back when he started, 60% was great. I want to read you one more stat. Here's the list of the all-time NFL yardage, passing yards, quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. You have Breeze and Brady, Peyton Manning's third, Brett Favre is fourth, Dan Marino is fifth, and then you have three guys near each other who are sixth, seventh, and eighth respectively. Philip Rivers is sixth, Eli Manning is seventh, Big Ben Roethlisberger is eighth, John Elway is ninth, and Matt Ryan is tenth. So Eli is seventh all time with over 57,000 yards passing. These are gigantic numbers. I know the quarterbacks that are coming up eventually, if they play long enough, they will pass him. But if he retires, or maybe even he plays another year, he's going to retire number seven, possibly number six. I don't know if he can get to Marino. I don't know how long he wants to play. Uh, apparently, he wants to play next year. And I certainly think he should. He's shown flashes of being the old Eli. And keep in mind, he hasn't played with a good offensive line in the last few years, has to get rid of the ball quickly. But between the yardage he threw, number seven all time, and his Ironman status, in addition to the two Super Bowl MVPs, I think that qualifies him well enough. But I'll defer to Kurt Warner. And you old Giant fans know, Kurt Warner was the quarterback of the Giants in Eli's rookie year. Kurt Warner was five and four. The Giants were five and four. They had a chance to make the playoffs. And I remember writing at the time that I thought they waved the white flag when they put Eli in and benched Warner, who was healthy. And Eli then went one and six. But if you look back in retrospect and say, oh, those seven games was the beginning of the Eli Manning era, and it kind of got him, you know, they threw him into the fire, and he was okay. Yes, they were one and six. But that kind of set the wheels to start moving where he'd play every game, every year, start every game, every year for a dozen years, and win two Super Bowls. But Kurt Warner, now on the NFL Network, when he was asked, is Eli Manning a Hall of Fame quarterback? He's got the best quote, and he's Kurt Warner. So here's his quote. Eli Manning is a Hall of Fame quarterback without Hall of Fame statistics. And I agree with that, other than the yards he's thrown for, which is over 57,000, which is seventh all time. That's Hall of Fame to me. Uh, Roethlisberger right behind him with two Super Bowls. He'll get in the Hall of Fame. The more interesting question is Philip Rivers, who's ahead of both of them, all three in the same draft class. But Philip Rivers has never won a Super Bowl. And to me, that's kind of the difference. And even between Big Ben, who was horrible in one of those Super Bowl wins, and Eli, as Eli was great in the final minutes, drove down the field twice, arguably once against the greatest team ever, uh, and definitely twice against Bill Belichick and Tom Brady to win both of those Super Bowls. So I think a lot of people think this is a close call or he shouldn't be it, but I'll say it once more. Eli Manning is absolutely a Hall of Fame quarterback. This is Steve Callis speaking of sports. We'll see you the next time.